Senator Tom Cotton, Republican from Arkansas, a member of the Judiciary Committee. Good morning, Senator. How are you? I'm good, Hugh. It's good to be back on with you. Thanks for having me. Well, there's a particular thing I want to talk to you about today. It's Judge Beryl Howell is a district court judge in the District of Columbia. Obama appointee, been on the bench for about 13 years, former AUSA, 10 years a staffer on the Judiciary Committee from 1993 to 2003. Uh, and then she was on the Sentencing Commission, and then President Obama put her on the court. That I, I don't know much about her as a judge because I don't do district court work there. But I, she lit into Twitter. I mean, absolutely torched Twitter for attempting to deny access to former President Trump's direct messages. I seem to recall a story about Tim Cook being very defensive about his refusal to allow Apple to help the United States government open up a terrorist iPhone, and that the media sort of applauded him. Do you think we have a double standard here? Hugh, <laughs> just a tiny double standard uh, based on whether the uh, target uh, of such investigation uh, sits with favor or disfavor with our liberal media. Um, I'm not very familiar with the judge's work, but I will say this. Uh, one, um, any staffer, any Democratic staffer in the Judiciary Committee is likely to have been highly partisan. Uh, that's just the fact of the matter about that case, about that committee. And two, uh, as we've discussed in the past about Judge Chuck, can remember, the D.C. Circuit or D.C. District and the D.C. Circuit is where uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden have put the most left-wing ideologues they can get through the Senate because there's no, no senators to check them. Um, that's where they put people they think are rising stars or true believers in the state. Um, so that's two things that your listeners should know about uh, judges on the D.C. Circuit. But I also so want them to remember, Tim Cook and Apple would not turn over the keys to the San Bernardino killer terrorist cell phone. Am I right about that? Am I recalling that correctly? Yeah, that's, no, I, I think it was San Bernardino. Yeah, Unfortunately, there were a lot of terror attacks back in the Obama era. Uh, but I think it was San Bernardino where there was a cell phone that was uh, locked and Apple wouldn't help the FBI open it. Uh, and I confronted Mr. Cook at a conference. And his, uh, let's just say that his, his response was, less than enthusiastic about helping uh, crack the case of a notorious terrorist. Uh, yet, uh, I'm sure he would be going to the mattresses if Donald Trump had an iCloud account the uh, FBI wanted to get. So has it crossed your radar yet that, that Twitter, the site formerly known as Twitter, now X, was not only fined $30,000, but Judge Howell, as recounted in Politico today, suggested out loud uh, that is this to make Donald Trump feel like he is particularly welcome new renewal user of Twitter, the judge asked. Isn't that <laughs> way out of line? It's, it sounds to me like uh, she may have joined Judge Chuck and her colleague uh, in suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. I, I'm very curious you to know what federal investigators could possibly have wanted from Donald Trump's Twitter accounts. I mean, it is there, after all, for the entire world to see. Um, so it's very curious to me that they not only sought his uh, access to his Twitter account, but also did so secretly to keep it from him and the public. They wanted his direct messages. Uh, by the way, I got it wrong. She fined Twitter 350000 for contempt. They wanted his direct messages. They got him. He, they wanted his location data, Senator Cotton. And you know, I, I, have to I say, does, does, does anyone really think that Donald Trump is sitting on, a, on an iPhone tapping out direct messages himself? <laughs> You know, apparently the judge does. And I, I don't know, but to imply that Twitter is a villain trying to get the former president back using Twitter as opposed to approaching it the way that, Steve, that, that well, Tim Cook approached. It's just so it's extraordinary double standard. Yeah, well, Hugh, and I think you should it's a, I think you should look at the double standard as well, not just a, of, um, you know, the San Bernardino and Terrace on the one hand and Donald Trump on the other hand, but also. Tim Cook, or for that matter, Jack Dorsey on the one hand and Elon Musk on the other hand. Um, when Jack Dorsey was the CEO of Twitter and when they were doing the government's uh, beck and call on COVID-19, uh, for instance, uh, Twitter was the darling of the left-wing media. But once Elon Musk took it over, uh, liberal media turned on it. It's pretty extraordinary. Now, I've been talking to people about the new judge in Georgia, Scott McAfee. Now, I don't want to talk about the Pettit Doctrine with you. Uh, which normally, if the feds go first, um, they go, and they don't go after the states until the states are done. Here we've got dueling banjo jurisdictions. What do you think of the Georgia prosecutor bringing this in in the wake of the Jack Smith indictment in D.C.? Well, I think it's another politicized prosecution that's more befitting of a third-world banana republic than our great country. 
Um, I mean, Donald Trump has now been indicted in Atlanta for his tweets, for goodness sake. This is a DA who's elected in a deep Democratic uh, city and who claimed that she was going to get Trump publicly and whose office is so incompetent that they can't even organize uh, what um, the release of the indictment after the grand jury votes in a press conference before midnight. Um, and I suspect you'll see that that incompetence is reflected in the investigation as well. But at root, like Jack Smith's ind indictment in Washington, like Alvin Bragg's indictment in New York, this is about politicizing pol um, or using law enforcement to pursue political differences. All of these cases arise out of campaigns. And you don't have to agree with Donald Trump's stance on the 2020 election. You certainly don't have to support Donald Trump or Republicans to realize that turning political differences in the middle of campaigns into criminal matters is a very dangerous precedent to set, something, again, that is more common in places like Brazil or Pakistan than in America. Now, I'm going to pose a rhetorical question that I put online yesterday, and I want to warn you, it triggered – uh, the left, including Adam Kinzinger and everybody in between Adam Kinzinger and the far left, when I posed the question first on the radio show, then on Twitter, what will be the mood in the country and what will historians write in 100 years if former President Trump is either acquitted on all counts in all four jurisdictions or all charges are dismissed by higher courts, but it happens after he loses a close rematch with President Biden? I think that's the worst case scenario for America. Do you agree with me on that, Senator? Yeah, I do think that's the worst case scenario. Um, I think most of these, if not all of these charges, should be dismissed as um, improvidently brought in violation of the First Amendment or just without actually stating any criminal conduct. And they should be and they should do so promptly before the election. Look, I, I understand that Democrats and liberals in the media can't stand Donald Trump um, and they'll do anything to stop him. But it would be much better from their point of view and the point of view of the country if they try to stop him on the campaign trail and at the ballot box and, and let the American people make these choices as opposed to having uh, rabid zealots like Jack Smith or uh, partisans like Alvin Bragg and the woman in Atlanta make these decisions for them to try to take them out of uh, – take. Uh, Donald Trump out of contention. And, you know, as Mitch McConnell once said about Harry Reid ending the filibuster for nominees back in 2013, you know, the shoe's going to be on the other foot at some point. It may be there sooner rather than later. Um, if the Democrats continue to go down this path, they shouldn't be surprised when Republican attorney generals or Republican district attorneys start finding ways to look under the hood of Joe Biden's family uh, operations. And you may see Senator someone else. Accused You're on judiciary, so I've got to ask you your experience. I, I've gone through it in my head. There were special counsels before the Independent Counsel Act, then there were 20 years of the Independent Counsel Act, and then we're back to special counsels. I think naming Mr. Weiss the special counsel in the Hunter Biden case is the first time the prosecutor who had the original matter got elevated to special prosecutor. Is that consistent with your, under, your recollection? Is there another time? I, I can't recall a time, and I know there have been cases in which um, a prosecutor has had a matter removed from his control and given to a special counsel. I can't recall a time when a prosecutor who had a matter has then been appointed special counsel, which, which you, in my opinion, is just an effort by Merrick Garland and his thoroughly politicized Department of Justice to continue running interference for Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. You know, Mr. Weiss was lined up to testify this fall in front of the House. I wouldn't be surprised if he now declines to do so. Mr. Weiss is responsible for that lopsided sweetheart plea deal, which, by the way, Hunter Biden's lawyers claim are still in effect. Remember, there's a plea deal and a diversion agreement. A diversion agreement doesn't require judicial approval. They put the uh, sweeping immunity in the diversion agreement. Um, they claim that it's still in effect. Imagine if they get a judge to actually rule in their favor, Q. There'll have been no plea bargain, but there will have been a huge sweeping grant of immunity, which alone would be caused for Merrick Garland to be removed from office. And, and I got to um, tell you, Mr. Weiss also allowed statute of limitation after statute of limitations to expire. I just yeah, can't every, understand. Every crime, I think as, as I understand it, every crime that Hunter Biden might have committed during his dad's vice presidency is now time barred because of David Weiss's inaction.
and he got elevated. I, I just, I don't understand. I don't think it's ever happened before. Special counsels in the modern era go back to Archibald Cox. There, I, I have someone, one of your staffers who wants to be a district court judge in the future, like Beryl Howell. Go look that up. Senator Tom Cotton, always a pleasure. Thank you, Senator.